What's up Spartans, welcome back to another Halo video. Now today's video we are going to be discussing about Halo Infinite. What will happen to Halo Infinite if it never lives up to the hype? So let's talk about it. Ever since T43 took over the Halo franchise, things haven't really been the same. If we look at the beginning on what T43 has done to Halo, the good stuff and the bad stuff, mind you I won't go through everything that T43 has done, I'll probably, you know, skip a few. So anyways, when T43 took over Halo, when Bungie left, uh, they made you know some updates for Reach, and I couldn't remember what updates they done to Halo Reach exactly, but I believe they added in the Halo Reach Hardcore playlist where there was no bloom, no armor abilities, and people were people were happy about this uh, this decision. And then in 2011, uh, T43 came out with Halo C Anniversary, and you know I was pretty I was pretty hyped up for the remake. And T43 added the co-op online support for C, and to me that was dope because OG. Uh, Halo C never had co-op online, so that was new at the time. We even got a DLC uh, backpack for Halo Reach 2, so that was awesome. After T43 announced Halo C Anniversary, then they announced Halo 4, a sequel to you know Halo 3. So T43 made their first official Halo game from ground up, and when Halo 4 dropped in November 2012, fans were not impressed by the changes you know T43 has made. Uh, me personally, I really liked Halo 4's campaign and its story, but the multiplayer is the main problem. It turned out to be a huge disaster, and it's what made people turn away from the franchise. Uh, the population dropped rapidly, and it was disheartening to see that. I mean, when Bungie made Halo Reach, it was it was when the fan base, you know, started to divide. You know, it was really slowly, but it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. It was basically a very early stage. But when Halo 4 came, things got worse. And after a lot of backlash Halo 4 had, people at T43 even admitted that yeah, we made mistakes, we learn from the next time. Uh, and I think they also said something like we hired developers that hated Halo, something like that. I do remember seeing, you know, reading that somewhere. I could be terribly wrong though. So three years later, after Halo 4 was released, uh, T43 announced Halo 5. It was released in 2015, and at the time I wasn't hyped up for the game because I didn't have an Xbox. I wasn't really following Halo 5 that much. But I know a lot of people hopped on the Halo 5's hype train because the marketing was crazy. The trailers, you know, for that game looked really dope. But when Halo 5 was released in 2015, it turned out to be a disaster again. Uh, the campaign was terrible. The story wasn't something that fans were hoping for. I didn't play the campaign until, you know, 2017. So I came a little late to the party. Um, but yeah, the campaign was absolutely terrible. Didn't even enjoy it. <laughs> uh, when I played the campaign for the first time, and you guys know the beginning mission where you see Agent Locke and his rest of his Osiris team when they jump out the pelican and skydiving. One thing came into my mind is Power Rangers. Look at this. Yeah, that kind of cutscene is, isn't what you would see in a Halo game, man. It, it's too generic. It's too like Power Rangers want to be. You know, th there's something wasn't right about that cutscene. So it gets bad to worse for Halo Five. Halo Five was missing a lot of content at launch. Like it was missing Forge, Infection, Game Type, and even worse, there was no split screen for Halo Five. Like, like why? <laughs> I don't want to judge Halo 5's multiplayer because I'm actually never, 
you know, really played this online before, so I'm gonna leave that one out. I don't wanna judge something that I've never actually played before. So it's been almost five years that we haven't had a Halo game since Halo 5, which is a long time ago. Uh, the next installment T43 are working on is Halo Infinite. Now Halo Infinite is going to be a very different, you know, compared to what T43 has done to Halo 4 and 5. Uh, you know, I am excited for Halo Infinite. I mean, I'm not absolutely crazy about it. You know, I'm not hyping it all up. In fact, I don't think anybody is. Everyone is still being cautious about the game after when playing, you know, Halo 4 and 5. The things that I want to tell you guys, and I said this multiple times in my streams, um, if Halo Infinite turns out to be a failure, it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. We are not going to see the population decline, just like we saw with Halo 4 and 5. So, it's basically a win for Microsoft and Team 43, no matter what they do to the game. Uh, because months ago, 343 announced that Halo Infinite will be free to play free to play uh, multiplayer and this shocked everybody and myself included having Halo Infinite free to play is a huge thing like not only the fact that it's going to be free but also have you know crossplay at launch you know where PC and Xbox players will you know play together and it's going to be available on Steam and not a lot of people are not really talking about that having Halo Infinite being free to play on Steam and that's a massive thing for Halo Infinite and if you think about it Steam is probably one of the most populated gaming platforms out there and Halo Infinite will be on there. If we look at other free-to-play games population like Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Warframe, Team Fortress 2, uh, CSGO, you know, I probably missed a few, but all these free-to-play games have a massive player base. And this is just on Steam alone. Look at the numbers. Imagine the population on other platforms. I mean, I don't think games like Team Fortress 2 or CSGO are, are available on the next-gen console, but they still have a massive fan base on PC. Uh, I do believe Halo Infinite will be competing with these free-to-play titles on, uh, you know, titles, at least some. What you all need to remember, Halo has been around for 20 years. 20 years. Uh, it has a much larger history than than some of these games. The Halo universe is massive. You know, when you look at when you look at Apex Legends, I remember that game dropped on, on Origin you know, at the time. And EA paid big streamers uh, on Twitch to, you know, to stream Apex Legends just to get its recognition out there because people didn't know what game it was exactly and the population skyrocketed. It worked, you know, EA pulled it off. Uh, so this makes me think about Halo Infinite once that game releases. Microsoft, they don't even need to pay streamers to stream Halo Infinite. That's actually an advantage for them because most big streamers know what Halo is. If you look at streamers like Ninja Tyler, Dr. Disrespect, Shroud and Summit G, uh, I'll probably miss a few. Uh, I can promise you, you know, Microsoft don't even need to pay these kind of streamers just to stream Halo Infinite, you know, to give it that exposure because these guys played Halo before, a very long time ago, and they will want to hop on Halo Infinite as soon as, as it drops, you know? They don't even need to be forced. When Halo Infinite releases in 2021, we are going to see a massive play, uh, play base unlike anything we saw in a Halo game before. We are going to see new players coming in and playing Halo Infinite. And these new players that will play Halo Infinite will be very new to the game. They won't know what Halo is exactly, what it's about. And that's what's really exciting, you know, uh, but, but also makes me feel very concerned at the same time. And I'll tell you why it's concerning for me, I mean, and it might be concerning for you as well, you know, the people that have been playing Halo for a very long time. Since Halo Infinite is going to be a free to play title, and you know, 343 announced some stuff about the armor coatings on how they are going to be charging people by picking a color or something. And the fan base were angered by this decision and it's a problem for us fans who have been playing these games for a decade now. The armor color customization option has always been free. It's, it, it always has been since uh, Halo 2. But new players that will play Halo Infinite, they won't even see this as a problem. This is a problem. They won't understand how much this future means to us because they never had that experience with Halo like we had. They never went through that journey like we did. New players won't have that deep understanding about the Halo games. They can't basically relate to it. They won't understand why the fans are frustrated by this decision. So this issue won't bother the new players at all. Like, they are going to support 343 on this and that's what makes me very, very concerned. So yeah, I am expecting new players, you know, sporting microtransactions in this game. Uh, no matter how much, you know, the fans despise it, you know, who have been around since Halo CE, which is saddening, you know, you are going to have people defending microtransactions and which sucks, so prepare for the worst guys. 
But the positive thing about the game, you know, the population, you know, it's going to be massive. You know, Halo will, will have a much larger community than ever before. Uh, it's going to have new players. And I do hope new players, you know, try the OG Halos, you know, like Halo MCC, if they truly do enjoy Halo Infinite and don't want to play the, uh, uh, play the other classic Halo games. We should be able to see new players trying out Halo MCC for the first time. Uh, maybe we could potentially see the player growth for the Halo MCC increase. Uh, that would be awesome, right? Like I said before, I don't see Halo Infinite declining or anything, no matter how much you know hatred it gets. Uh, Halo Infinite will be gaining new players every time, you know, and the population is going to be massive regardless uh, because it's a new game and mainly it's going to be free to play. And free to play games population kicks ass, right? Uh, I mean, Halo Infinite multiplayer could potentially be very good overall. That's the advantage Halo Infinite may have. It may not be good as Halo 2 or Halo 3, but it can still be a very good game. A very good Halo game, actually. Uh, maybe not good as Halo 2 or 3. Um, just because Halo Infinite may not be good as uh, Halo 2 or 3, it doesn't mean it can't be a good Halo game. There's still potential for that. I am confident the campaign and the story is going to be great. Uh, I do have hopes for it. However, we still haven't seen a lot with Halo Infinite. Uh, the gameplay demo we saw was just five minutes of gameplay, not even eight minutes. I don't know why. I don't know why people say it's actually eight minutes gameplay when it when they were just cutscenes most of the time. So yeah, we want to see more, you know see what the multiplayer is like uh, on how it plays like. We want to see everything about the multiplayer. Hopefully, if we can share you know new info on that somewhere, possibly early 2021. They did mention something like that. Okay, guys, I think I said it enough for today's video. I kind of wanted to get this video off my chest for a while now. Glad that I made it. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Do you guys agree or disagree on what I said? Uh, I would love to hear your uh, comments down below. And be sure to subscribe for more Halo content and follow us on Twitch. I, I literally stream Halo on there, you know, every day. And I'll see you, Spawns, in the next video. Bye.